The command stretch. The command stretch is something which we use very regularly in our drawing work. And if done correctly, it can save us a lot of time and energy. It is really worthwhile to learn to use the command stretch right from the beginning properly, because then you can stretch with confidence. And that's what this video is all about. So what does a stretch command actually do? Well, with a stretch command, we make objects larger or smaller in one particular direction, while one or more points remain fixed. So for example, we can mark an object like a line here, pick a grip and move it in one particular direction to make it larger or smaller. The same applies to polylines. With polylines, we can stretch one of the sides in which case the side isn't changed at all in the sense of becoming longer or shorter, but the connection points move and for that reason the lines above and below in this case are actually made longer or smaller. Or we can click on one of the corners and stretch two of the sides at once. What happens though if we want to stretch more than one object at once? Well for this particular process we have our stretch command here above. So I call out the command, it says here, select objects. So I think, oh, I, I want to stretch these. So I select them, enter, left click, left click, and nothing happens. Hmm. In order to use this command properly, we have to have an understanding of how to select objects using a rectangular selection. It's also possible to do it with a lasso. You know, these things where you click the left button on the mouse and just move around a bit. We won't use those for our example here though because it makes it a little bit more complicated. I'm talking about the selection left click left click from left to right or left click left click from right to left. The first one from left to right is a so-called window selection and that only takes objects into the selection which are completely in this selection rectangle or from right to left, which is green, it is called a crossing selection and it basically takes anything which is touched by the rectangle. And it's this latter one, the second one, a crossing selection, which we have to use for a stretch command. Because as we said earlier, stretch makes objects larger or smaller while one or more points remain fixed. And that doesn't work if we select everything, then all of the points are moved. None of them are fixed. So that's the first point to remember. When using the stretch command, we select using left click, left click from right to left. So how do we do it then? Well, let's try it out. Stretch, left click, left click, right click or enter, left click, left click, and I've stretched it. Or I can say stretch, left click, left click, left click, left click, and I can do two sets of objects at once, one becoming larger, one becoming smaller, although of course I'm only moving in one direction. We see there as well what happens if we select an object completely, even if it's from right to left, a crossing selection. This little rectangle here was completely in my selection set, so when I now left click, left click, the whole object is moved. And that's actually something which is very useful. Now there are basically two types of stretch maneuver or stretch move. The one is where we just want to make something larger or smaller. So I'll say I want to make this smaller by 200 millimeters. So I click once to define my base point. It doesn't matter where it is, I could do it with my eyes closed. It's just that the second click has to be in a particular direction with the distance which I want. So if I say I want to make it 200 millimeters smaller, I give the direction from left to right. I write 200 with the keyboard, enter, and it's become 200 millimeters smaller. What about if I want to stretch an object in relation to another object? Stretch, left click, left click, right click or enter. I want to, for example, stretch this object onto this line here. No problem. I could take a point, for example, the middle, perpendicular to the line, and there it is. Or I could say, stretch, left click, left click, right click, 
or enter. Let's take the point here, the end point. That was a left click. Control right click from from where? From perpendicular to this line with a distance, say, of 200 millimeters. Just to check I've done it right. Measure from there to there. Hey presto, 200 millimeters. We can see how useful it is to be able to stretch and move things at the same time if we think about how we can stretch this particular window element so that it gets larger to the left while this actual element here stays the same size. Stretch, left click, left click, enter or right click, left click, left click. This stayed the same size, this got larger. We can, of course, do it such that this middle element or this middle post just moves across. Stretch, left click, left click, right click, left click, left click. Sometimes if we've been stretching dimensions, our dimension text will actually stay where it is, which is rather unusual, you may say. But there are certain circumstances where we've maybe moved the dimension text so that it can be better read. In this case, maybe I've just manually put it in the middle for some reason. And then when we stretch our objects, the dimension text stays where it is. Now, of course, I can just manually put it back where it belongs. But it might be easier, especially if there are more dimension elements like this, to restore everything back to how it was before I started playing with it manually. And for that, you need the command dim edit. So you can write dim edit, enter twice, select objects, enter, and they're all restored to how they were before. So if I now stretch it, my dimension text actually moves with the dimension. So as you can see, once you've got the idea of selecting the right objects down to a T, that's with a selection rectangle from right to left, not from left to right. In actual fact, stretching is really easy. Well, that was fun. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give us a good thumbs up as everybody on YouTube's like this. As well, if you have questions, if you would like another video, if you have problems with your drawing, don't hesitate to contact us. You can see where and how now. And we look forward to hear from you. If you find that these videos, which we actually quite regularly post, help you really in your work and your drawings, why don't you subscribe to our channel and you will get information as soon as we post something and you can benefit from it. So, hope to see you soon. Bye.